Hidis, a name which is known to many, have released a new dongle. And this time, what I have with me here, the recently released SD2 here. Special looking dongle. So let's just quickly have a look at the price and the packaging and the configuration for this SD2. As you can see here, directly on uh, Hidis uh, website, it is uh, announced and offered at the price of 39.99 US dollar. And if you purchase this directly from Hidis official store, what you're going to get also is that an additional component which will allow you to adapt this to iPhone Lightning. You see here, let's start with the physical build of this SD2. This is definitely very interesting looking dongle, one of a kind. I haven't seen anything like this before. So this is essentially a metal enclosure, the body itself, in this very peculiar shape. Very interesting. Some people it might even say that this is like a Tetris kind of shape. It is aluminium CNC machine. So you can be rest assured that this thing is quite durable and solid. And it comes only in 3.5 mm single ended. This uh, USB Type-C here, okay, male. And what you're going to find inside is that uh, this uh, ESS Saber ES9270. And it, can, it is capable of supporting up to 384 kHz, 32-bit and DSD128. Quite impressive for something so small like this. Ultra compact dongle. And the power is pretty much uh, quite moderate at uh, 70 milliwatt uh, of power per channel at 32 ohm with a very good signal to noise ratio as well which is what at 118 db among the many dongles that you have seen there for example like something like this uh, you know fc6 or dc04 pro or you know any dongle which is usually bigger than this 99 percent of them does not have microphone support but the good thing is that this sd2 have microphone support the first time when i received this sd2 right out of the box i attach it to my phone here which is sony xperia 1 mark 4 like this, Boop. very easy, simple, no cable at all, okay, no hassle. I decided to use my, as usual, this Kinera Idun Golden. And the reason that I choose to use this first and foremost, because I need to understand what sort of sound presentation does this SD2 offer. Okay, this thing is transparent, neutral and uncolored. And true enough, what I'm hearing, what I have heard, as you can see here, let me just share you this, all right? Is something which I would consider as balanced and neutral tune deck M. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that there's no hint of coloration or boosting or you know, reduction of sound frequency. The dynamic expression itself, all right, everything sounded transparent and neutral to me, especially even when connected to this Sennheiser HD600 here, which is another of my neutral reference. So. I can be rest assured that whatever that I'm hearing is truthful to the intended you know, sound from the source all the way to the listening device. But when we talk about synergy, okay, perhaps I would just go straight forward that the best sort of output or combination of sound which I'm hearing from this SD2 is from another Hidis product itself, which is Hidis MP145, magnetic planner here. All right, and also this Final Audio A5000. I was really you know, mesmerized. And I'm not even exaggerating it, okay? Mesmerized because for something which is so simple like this, I didn't expect it to be sounding so dynamic, okay? With the way it expressed the dynamic range from lower frequency, all gradient of dynamic range all the way from lower frequency, mid-range to the upper frequency, all sounded mature and balanced and very well defined with macro and micro detail, the transient itself, it flows gracefully. So the keyword here is that being smooth, graceful, and there's no hint of offensiveness, even in the PINA region, which is the upper mid-range, all the way to the upper frequency. When I switch to my reference here, which is Shure KSE 1500, it gets even better because this KSE 1500 is the most resolving IEM to ever exist in this world at least from my perspective, okay? And it is also the very best. So what it takes is that, you know, what it needs is that a suitable pairing partner, something which can, this KSE 1500 can appreciate this electrostatic. So when I connect these two using this, uh, through this line out, line in of this uh, KSE 1500, which is a KSA 1200, I am hearing the sort of resolution which really surprised me because to be honest with you, this SD2 was able to emit the sort of imaging, resolution, crispness, and you know, 
the macro and micro detail which can be expected of more expensive deck amp okay and i am not joking <laughs> this is for real and the same can be said for this electrostatic uh m uh listening device which i have here which is stack srm002 i am getting pretty much similar result albeit being a bit more musical and less analytical but it is exceedingly pleasant and smooth with what i have mentioned just now it just simply indicate that this sd2 seems to be very well tuned to be flexible highly adaptable to any kind of listening partner so when i switch further to my most used magnetic planner here which is this sivga nightingale or even this uh, Tanjim Zero here, okay. I am getting something which I would consider as very immersive sounding. So this SD2 was able to project, right, the kind of output which is needed by this Sivga Nightingale to obtain the sort of balance which I would consider as being properly defined between musical and being analytical. So I'm getting quite a bit of, let's say, airy, sort of presentation with the way the dynamic transient are being presented never offensive at the same time i'm getting macro and micro detail and yet the immersive musical element is very strong power wise i would say that this sd2 is fairly good okay and i say fairly good because when i attach it with my sennheiser hd 600 here 300 ohm and also this magnetic planner of high fireman sundara okay I need to crank the volume on my phone here all the way to 95 out of 100 on certain song. So which means that despite being able to achieve a proper listening loudness, the headroom is pretty much at around just probably like 15% left or 20% at best. So I was hovering between 80 to 95% depending on which song and that is based on my sensitivity to loudness. Okay. So it could be totally unusable to some people who would require higher volume. I can imagine that, you know, if you are familiar with, you know, very powerful type of DAC M which offer 4 VRMS, probably you would find that this SD2 will not offer that much of headroom. So as you can see there, SD2 scored pretty much very impressive, especially on the sound department there. I am giving it quite high score on the dynamic itself because that is pretty much comparable to some of the much higher price dongle and of course it offers very good tone and timber balance sound richness is also good sound technicality is also good for something which is relatively simple like this okay so let's talk a bit more on the comparison with the rest of the dongle which i already mentioned here for example let's just compare it with the most recent uh Hedis product as well which is Hedis s9 pro plus malta okay you see the the main difference between these two is that both of them are very well balanced and very well tuned you can see that you know the scoring itself pretty much identical but the main difference that i would like to clarify is that when you listen to malta it is obvious that when you actually observe the upper frequency the decay of the treble, Malta would offer a bit more of air and smoothness. Where else the focus for this SD2 is pretty much more on crispness. So it would appear be less airy as compared to Malta. Where else with the rest of the sound frequency, they are pretty much identical in many ways. They are mature sounding, very well defined, very well tuned and very well balanced. So if you compare again something like, you know, Earphone UA100 or even Shangling UA2+, Okay, I must admit that you know, perhaps on the sound richness, the UA2 Plus would offer one notch higher than this SD2, but they are also more expensive, okay, and they are also bigger. But then again, that differences is only evident if I were to compare them side by side. So, in manner of saying is that with less footprint, right, less real estate, this SD2 was even able to scale up, up to that level. I think he just did an impressive job with this SD2 here. I did mention repeatedly previously that this SD2 is very well balanced and this is also applicable when it comes to sound tuning and tonality as you can see here, all right? The way it presents the sound. It is somewhere right there in the middle between analog natural sound to digital hi-fi. It is not exactly warm, it is not bright, so the keyword here again is very well balanced and it is quite comparable to the other dongle, highly respected dongle like X-Duo Link 2 Balance, Jackali AP10, Tanjim Space and even Dawn Pro.